chill. Um, but I, in the books, Marcella likes kind of fight her own fight and to try and get through, which I was a storyline that I would just really, really want to play. So it kind of lessened the blow of the recast that it wasn't that storyline. Um, so, um, but there, I knew that there was like horse riding going to be involved then in like that storyline. I'm really badly allergic to horses, but I love them. So I remember like walking up to all the horses on set being like, soon my pretty. <laughs> Just, just, just wear away your allergy until you get down. Yeah, they, they asked you to ride them, and you said nay. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Anything? Um, well, I mean, the Winterfell set, which is like the only set I was on, it's just, in, in, I'm trying not to swear. It's flipping incredible. Like, <laughs> gosh damn, like it's, because like from the outside, it's just like loads of like bits of unpainted wood leaning against, you know like those fake western sets where it's just like a one wall and then some struts holding it up? But when you go inside and the fire, the fire pits are burning and there's chickens running around and there's a guy, an extra, pretending to chop up meat and there's like these you know, extras walking up and down with back boxes of carrots and stuff and you're like, I'm actually here. I don't have to act, I'm actually here. Um, so the whole, like, if I could take that set and just like put it in my back garden, market it as an experience, Make a bit of money off of it, you know. But, um, yeah. You know, that actually reminds me of something I don't know that I, I hear a lot about. Um, you mentioned extras, and I, and I know I've always heard about, like, with a really big name celebrity, you know, extras are, are told on set. I have friends who've worked as, as extras, and they're, they're told, you know, you, you can't approach them at all, you can't say anything, if they say something to you, that's fine. Do you guys have any, you know, experience working with the extras on set, getting any, I mean, there's a lot of time between takes sometimes, like, you could have hours of downtime. They, well, they, so they generally tend to keep, <laughs> I was going to say, they tend to keep the extras separate, which sounds like they're like animals. <laughs> but there's like, there's like different areas for, so the actors will have like their own trailers, and then the extras will have like an area. Um, <laughs> and there's, Fence there's stuff. Gen <laughs> she's allergic, she's yeah. allergic to them, so yeah. yeah she's <laughs> <laughs> in the pilot though, but then they let to then, because it was like a featured extra part, just like stuff up, um, they let me interact, because I had like, like I was in the carriage with Lena and stuff, so then they let me into like the main green room. Um, but there's, all, there's also like different people for, so there's different hair and makeup for extras, there's different costume department for extras, because it's such a huge scale. Um, so there's not really a sense of it being not much time to no. interact with yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I made a real big point of like trying to meet as many of the background artists I believe they're called. Um, as, supporting as, artists. Supporting artists as, as possible. Um, like I had my lunch with them. I mean I, I hate actors, they're all self-obsessed and big egos, all of them. I mean, you know, so, um, but actually I, I, I like, I've got like, if you look through my phone contacts, there's like, random names like Adrian the Stock Guard. Because like when you're standing on set waiting for like a new shot, you're just standing next to these guys for like it can be hours or whatever, and so it's like you, you chat to them, you know. Some of them are a bit a bit weird, you know. Um, <laughs> you, you'd have to be. Um, they don't get paid enough, so you'd have to be a bit, you know. But um, yeah, but you get people extras lining up to, to be yeah, on yeah. Game of Thrones. And, and, and one, one of the great things yeah. is um, hours because it's because it's in Belfast. The show makes a really big point about trying to hire like mainly Northern Irish and Irish um, like background supporting artists as much as possible to like put stuff back, put employment back into the into place. So it's really also nice cuts down on travel costs. Yeah, like, yeah, let's be yeah. Honest I mean, <laughs> it's not entirely selfless, <laughs> but it, like every other person in you know everyone in Northern Ireland knows someone who's in Game of Thrones. So, um, like, I, I I used to have a boyfriend who's really but he was a very big fan of Game of Thrones and he used to introduce me and he'd go, this is my girlfriend, she was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> and like whoever he was introducing me to would be like, yes, it was my friend. <laughs> like nobody gives a shit. Yeah, that's very similar for me because I live in Bracknell and that's where Harry Potter was filmed. So that's where it's like every time someone comes to Bracknell and I, drive, I pick up from the station, on the way back to my house I'm like, oh, so you know Harry Potter there? Yeah, I'm like, privet drive. And then I just carry on driving, and then I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's Privet Drive. And then like all the forest, and I'm like, oh yeah, by the way, that's what this happened, that's what this happened. And they all go like mental, and I just say it like, 
Do you know that? Sure, me that. Yeah, Drive is around the corner. So, so my, 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 where I live, uh, near Hastings, is quite similar. This is actually where they filmed the Battle of Hastings back in 1066. Um, <laughs> this is the hill. Um, uh, this, is, this is where they filmed here. And it was, it was back before like regulation in the film industry, so like there was a lot of death, a lot of death. Like, many animals were harmed in the making of this film. Um, I believe it's on HBO or Netflix or something. You can catch it up. You can watch any of these things. <laughs> Uh, Carrie, did you ever, I mean, if you were growing up there, was there ever a chance to either audition or be an extra on Harry Potter? Was that a, was that a thing? Well, I didn't start, um, I didn't start acting until afterwards, so um, the same, the same, like everyone was it. So everyone that was sort of around the same age range, age range was probably in Harry Potter. So like all of my friends, all of my friends know people in it. Um, and yeah, it was like, oh, well, I was in Harry Potter. I was like, yeah, mate, so it was half the, well, so, half, so it was half bloody brat now. Um, <laughs> Like any man with a beard, but yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so I wasn't old enough. I started just after. Um, but yeah, it was really cool, and it, I was just kind of never know really anything different because when I was really, really young, obviously I didn't, I couldn't watch. Well, not that I couldn't watch Harry Potter, but you know, four-year-olds shouldn't really. Watch, well, they can, but you know, I didn't really watch it. And yeah, so it's just kind of like. Normal kind of just grew up always knowing that Harry Potter was filmed where I used to make wigwams. So, if, if you know anybody who need, and they're, they're looking for like a young Hagrid or something, I mean, spin off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if we get back into like Game of Thrones stuff, like I know we talked about the. <laughs> not that we were like so far. Ravenclaw! Right. Woo! <laughs> So we kind of talked about like if there were things that you saw um, that you didn't quite get to do. Was there any actors that you didn't get to work with that you were like, man, I would love to work with that person? Christian Nan, who plays Hodor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was in a completely different time. Like <laughs> Harry started the season after I ended, and we and we became like really good friends. And just like because I would hang out with um, Isaac and Lizzie, so we would be there. Um, so, Sorry. I was always kind of pissed off because I would have really liked to have done a scene with her. I think that would be really good crap. Yeah, we yeah. would have had a great time. Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine that like me? Oh, I think we both lose our job within like the first two weeks of filming. <laughs> uh, there were lots of, I, got, I was really lucky, I got to work with lots of like the actors I really wanted to, but then there were so many actors in it that it's not possible. Well, you, you, you had some, I mean, you were with everybody on, on the pilot. I mean, the cast wasn't nearly that big at the time of the pilot. Yeah, so. but I still only worked with the ones who were in the scene that I was in. So I didn't right. get to work with the media or anything. I never worked with the media. So what was it like working with, like, Lena or, or Nick? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the thing about Lena especially is that she's just, like, a ridiculously nice person um, and a ridiculously good actor. So I would literally like sit there when we were filming and I'd be watching her like, how are you doing that with your face? <laughs> um, and she, like, she didn't, she actually took like the time to talk to me and didn't like just, it wasn't like caught and his off back to her dressing room. She would always sit with me in the green room and chat and um, it was, uh, that was one of the best experiences for me, working with her and Peter Dinklage were two of my Main, um, main squeeze. <laughs> main squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The main. So I've just been working with Isa from Max von Sydow, who's a legend, by the way. Um, and all the kids who played the young Starks, uh, Sebastian Croft, who was just an incredible young actor, um, Cordelia, who played young Liana, amazing actors. But I was in my trailer um, getting changed. I'd just finished like my last scene. Um, and I looked down my trailer window and there was a whole group of people coming to film the next scene in the Winterfell set. And uh, there was Sophie Turner, there was Gwendolyn Christie, there was um, Aidan Gillen, there was just a whole, like, ev everyone you could want to meet. And the first thought was, I'm going to go and say hello. The second thought, well, I looked down, realised I didn't have any clothes on. Um, <laughs> and I considered it because you would, wouldn't you? Like, like, is that embarrassment? Like, I mean, I'd make an impression, they wouldn't forget me, you know. <laughs> Some of them might be interested, I don't know, you know. Um, not everybody likes it big, you know. Um, but, um, but no, 
No, uh, so I, I, I whipped my clothes on as quick as possible, um, which if there's anyone sort of my size around here, you know, it's, it's not too easy, you know. Um, I nearly fell over a few times, tried to open the door, ran out, fell out the stairs and they were gone. They were in their trailers um, and I missed, I missed that opportunity. Um, probably for the better. Um, I've still got a reputation just above. <laughs> Carrie, anybody? anybody? Um, you, you yeah, um, I always said that I would really have liked to have worked with Peter Dinklage. Um, yeah, just because I think he's just absolutely incredible. He's definitely one of the actors that I kind of look up to, inspire to, and um, like even when, like when I first started, that was the one person I was like, oh, maybe I'll get to meet Peter, even if I just got to say hi. Like he's one of my favourite people, and he was definitely someone that I would have just liked to have met, let alone like worked with or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, you had more seasons on, on the show than, than, than the other two, so I mean, over the, over the course of, of time that you did, I know you spent a lot of time with, with Stephen Delane or, or, or Liam Cunningham, you know, any, anybody there that, like, you know, Amy was talking about Lena as a role model, anyone there that, that you took to that... that oh yeah, Liam, 100%. Um, Liam was like, uh, you know, Liam, the same, as, um, the same as Lena would like, you know, he would always make sure that I was okay, he was almost like a dad. Um, um, yeah, we always had a great laugh on set and he would always, um, you know, make sure that I was like having fun and like enjoying myself. And he was the one person where if I messed up, he was like, it's okay, like, don't worry about it. Like, he just always made me feel, especially in the first season that I joined, you know, um, kind of very nervous. I was 12, first acting job. Um, I knew it was somewhat um, kind of a, big, like a big deal, not as big as a deal as it is now. But, um, yeah, and like I'd, if I'd like say my line wrong, he'd always be like, it's okay, don't worry, just relax, like no one's here to judge you, blah, blah, blah. And he just made the entire experience ten times better because having that person that's like, that you know, and especially, and also because he's in The Little Princess and I grew up on that film. But, um, yeah, so it was just amazing to have that person that kind of um, was there to help me into this industry that um, is like so mental and just someone that sort of like kept keeps your head down and keeps, you know, keeps you grounded. Which it's is amazing like how that mirrors the on-screen relationship, off-screen I was going to say, so oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would have loved to have worked with more of like the really awesome, like, uh, female actors um, in the show. I also had a nanny played uh, the young old man. She was amazing. She was this lovely down-to-earth lady who had done soap operas over in Dublin like her whole life and that's how she made a living. She had such interesting stories. And Cordelia who played young Leanna, but, like, I watched like Amelia, um, Natalie, uh, Lena, these guys, Gwendolyn, all of them just, just rocking it, you know? Um, strong female leads that like young girls can aspire to be like and sort of grow I, up. I hope ambitions. most young girls don't aspire to be like Cersei. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you know, better to be fierce and slightly. They can aspire to be like Rosella. Yeah. Yeah. The old master. <laughs> So something else we were kind of talking about um, with acting, obviously if it's like a TV show, you're kind of working with multiple directors and stuff, so it's kind of an opportunity to, for you to have a stamp on your character, like you're the one who kind of carries it across the board. So was, like, what did you guys individually bring to your characters, do you think? Um, uh, they, do, they don't really tip kindly to 12 year olds giving them notes, <laughs> so... <laughs> I um, for, and also because it was my first like real acting job in inverted commas, I had done a few other little things before, but this was the first big thing. Um, I they told me to jump, I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like totally in awe of the whole process, and I didn't. Uh, and be, I think partly because I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to read the full scripts, and I wasn't fully. I mean, I knew what was happening, but I wasn't, like, supposed to. Um, so, there, there was, the only real, real way that I feel that, I guess, is the, the thing that we, it, 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 I don't really think that it's different because we were working with different directors. I feel like that's what you do as an actor, regardless of the director. You, you, it's your interpretation of it. And that doesn't change depending on the director, that just, Changes depending on the actor. And I think, especially, yeah. you know, sort of being so young, um, you know, you're always like being so young, you know, you, you do as you're told kind of thing. And it's like, you know, if they wanted me to do something, you do it. And um, I remember there was one scene where um, 
Um, there was one director who used to tell me, uh, at the end of it, he used to be like, great, free swim. That terrified me every time, because that would mean you're going to do another take and you do absolutely anything you want. And I was like, but I just want to do what you told me to do, because that's what someone meant to do. And like 12-year-old me had absolutely no idea what to do, so I'd end up doing this free swim and doing exactly the same that I'd been doing every other time. Because, and then maybe I would like pick up something as a difference, be like, no, look, I did something. But yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really like, um, I didn't really like give my own like interpretations or anything. I just kind of rocked up and winged it. Sam, I know you were a bit older than the other guys when you started filming. Yeah. So was that any different, or do you feel well, the same? I was a lucky, lucky boy because um, usually when you get a character, I mean, in a, in a way, I was unlucky in the fact that I didn't get that amazing process where you can kind of put your stamp on it, you, you can kind of build it. I like to, to imitate, and imitation is a very different thing to creation, as it were. Um, you know, Christian have done such an, uh, an incredible job over those, like, four seasons to build this just incredible character who only says one word, um, but through that, you feel him. You, whether he's shouting down a well, standing in a bush naked, or, you know, whatever, you know, you feel his emotions, you feel his... So I, I had an amazing, like, base to craft what I was going to do off. And I, I was lucky that it, I was beforehand, so I didn't have to be like that. I just had to be something that someone who could grow into that. Um, and I tried to put my stamp on it, um, and I was really lucky that in the whole rolling all around on the floor scene, the, you know, that one, um, I, I had Jack Bender directed, who's an amazing director, he's directed Lost and sort of things. And this was his first episode he'd ever directed on the show. Um, and he was really nice, and he just said to me, because um, he was talking to me about how I wanted to do it, and I was talking about the fact that, you know, members of my family have had epilepsy, and I've sort of seen quite dramatic fits, and I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do, and he, he stuck his hand on my shoulder and just went, Sam, you got this. Just, you, you do what you feel is right, and we'll go with it. And he was such, a, that was such an amazing responsibility, and a scary responsibility. Um, and I'm like, shit, okay, um, I got I got actually, uh, you know, because sometimes being an actor, it's quite easy to do what you're told. Someone says, stand here, say this line, in this emotion, do this, do that, you do it, and then you're like, right, great, where's lunch? But, um, like that, that responsibility of not ruining the work that Christian had done with that character, that awesome responsibility, which I hope I didn't, I didn't muck it up too much, I hope. Um, he did pretty good. <laughs> My ego is big enough already, you don't need to. So, so, so you, you, you all talked about, you know, <coughs> um, I guess, you know, you said you didn't want to mess up what the directors told you, but, you know, you said that was one directing style. Um, you were in a, two episodes, right? So for those of you who were in more than two episodes, what other, you know, specific kind of styles, even if you didn't, didn't want to stray too far from the path, what other directing styles did you find you, you encountered or, or, or worked or, or found difficult? Or? I worked with a few very different directors. Um, so I worked with David Nutter, um, who I loved. Um, he is the, the running joke that was always that he was a bit of a nutter. Um, but he was the only, he was the first director on the show. Um, he, this was season two, episode six, I think. Whatever episode I went away. And he um, was the first director to have worked, who was a TV director as opposed to a film director. And everyone was like, he's so fast. Um, he just he knew how to get the job done really fast because he was used to that environment. Whereas all the other directors really took their time. And, but I think he kind of come out with, with you, you know, you still know, it's still the same quality. It's just a very different style. And David was such a big character. Um, and he would, make you laugh and make you feel very comfortable in that sense. But then I also worked with Alec, who was, um, he had been the DOP in the first season, and then he was director of the second episode. First or second, second season. One of the episodes in the second series. And he had the most gentle manner about him. He would lean down and whisper to you. But it was the most lovely way, and he, he, he just got what he wanted from you. I feel like you want, I definitely wanted to do a really good job for him because I wanted him to like me. Because <laughs> he was such a nice, gentle soul and he would sit down and 
through your talk. My experience from what I've heard talking to other members of the cast, like these directors weren't like that and they were there with you and taking you through the process and I think the end result is always so much better because um, we can't do it on our own, we're hopeless, you know, we need someone holding our hand kind of throughout the thing, guiding us where their vision is taking us. Um, I think we'll do like one more question and then maybe turn it over to the audience. So if you guys want to like, line up, I'm if you have, have questions. nothing to ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, one other thing I kind of wanted to bring up is that um, obviously you got started in musical theater. You have music backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I saw Amy you loves sing. to sing. <laughs> Amy you loves to sing. Pretty loves lo Amy shouldn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my like fun question is if they ever did a game. Would you guys be into that? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> who, would, who would you play? No, yeah. <laughs> who would you want to play? Yeah. Out as a bastard, orphan, son of a star, and a, you know, God's name, it writes itself, doesn't it? I, mean, I can't really top that. <laughs> So this is to everybody. We talked about some of the stuff that you guys wanted to take from the set, but was there anything that you or your fellow cast members actually got away with stealing from the set? I did speak about this in the last panel. I, on my last day, there were five, uh, so there were five replicas of the stag that Davos makes Shireen, and um, three of them went to production, and then Liam and I took one each. Um, we had to take the broken ones, but you know. So I think his had like a missing antler, mine had a missing ear or something like that. But um, yeah, we both took one of them, and then I took um, I don't know, hair ties, so I had at the end of my hair. And my sister, weirdly enough, took a, because it was a fresh um, scar every day. My sister, being the weirdo that she is, took one of them when she came to visit. She was like, I want it, I want to play with it. I was like, Rachel, it's a scab that's come off my face. Is this the same sister who didn't oh, care if you died? Yeah, the same sister who didn't care if I died. I mean, it's a loving intention. On the show, not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, when I did Leatherface, the horror film, I took a whole load of like fake prosthetic like, scars and bullet wounds and stuff. That's so cool. Um, um, I hope that's the only prosthetic that you took. Oh, uh, yeah. Christian, so Christian kept it. I mean, I wish it was that big. I mean, Christ. Um, something to aspire to. Um, anyway, um, let's bring the tone up a bit. Um, I, so between takes, especially in Ireland, because it's quite cold, um, there's these like 101 people that like shroud you with blankets and coats and like, like do you want a drink? Do you want an umbrella? And, like, no, no, it's fine, honestly, I'm so don't, don't, don't do this. Um, but they like treat you like, like royalty. Um, but there's this really nice fleece jacket, really nice, um, like top quality fleece jacket. Um, and it's, you know, it's hard to find things like that my size without spending a lot of money. And, um, I mean, they left it in my trailer and I took that as, you know, like, no, what other people are going to wear that, you know? John Bradley, Christian, like, oh, yeah, I said, I'll have it. Um, it's Game of Thrones, they've got enough money. Um, and I haven't, so, you know, yeah. So I took the jacket. I still wear it today, it's very comfy. I can't believe you took a keyboard. Oh my god, it's so amazing. But the only problem is, right, you know? <laughs> you know, like, in, like, department stores and stuff, like, especially, like, the hardware ones, people wear those kind of, like, fleecy jackets? And that's how you know they're like a member of staff. If I, when it, whichever shop I end up in, if I wear it like to a shop, somebody, because I'm quite tall as well, will always like ask me questions about stuff like, Hi, s sorry, do you know where the milk is? No. Like, can I, can you reach that for me? No. Um, but you know, so it's, it's, it's a comfy jacket. I can recommend it. If you're ever on the set of Game of Thrones, steal the jacket. <laughs> got a very little time left. <laughs> I, um, I took, I, the only thing that I took was a scrap that was cut off on my, one of my dresses. That was it. That was the only thing I could get away with. And I've now lost it. Aww. I've lived twice, three times since then. So. I got a lock of my hair as well. I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is for Carrie, and I apologize if you've touched on this already in another panel or anything, but if you can talk a little bit about your final, like your death scene, and just whether or not you were able to play off the reactions of the people watching that, or whether it was just kind of focused on you when it was shooting and then shot the reaction shot separately. I'm just kind of curious what that process was like. Well, um, leading up to the scene, 
um, it was really hard to prepare for because, you know, it wasn't something, it, it's not something where you can just go, oh, I can take that from my life and then make it this. Never been burned, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I was like, how do I get into this mindset? So I, I've spent a lot of time being like, what do I do? How do I approach this? And I think everyone on the set knew kind of what a big scene it was and how big it was for me personally. So we did all of the sort of close-ups and anything where anything that was to do with my, me and my face, sort of very at the beginning, and then so they kind of just got a bit easier, and the scene got a lot easier to film uh, towards the end. And because of child licensing laws, I couldn't be on there for more than seven hours. So um, yeah, and the whole scene was just incredible because it was like, um, and there were like these massive fans, and they were giant up top, and they were making loads of noise. So actually, that helped a lot because. Um, they, took, they, they would take me um, away whilst I was over there and um, they'd take me into the middle of like an abandoned car park and make me scream just to like, you know, warm up and practice so that when I, got onto the, when I got there on the day I wouldn't like not know what to do. And um, yeah, and it was, it, that really helped as well, like the fact that there was always there was loads of noise so I didn't feel like I was like screaming the face down. Um, and yeah, so it was really weird because there was 200 extras sort of all watching and that kind of made me a, bit, a little bit nervous because um, they were all adults and I was like this child that was given this like responsibility of this scene. And um, yeah, so I spent a lot of the time sort of looking above their heads and not into their faces because I was like trying to concentrate. And um, yeah, the whole scene was just incredible. It was amazing. It was such a different experience, nothing I'd ever done before. Um, and yeah, and I was really sad when the scene finished filming because, um, well luckily it wasn't my last scene. Um, but yeah, because it got to the third day and they didn't need me on the third day and it was meant to be my last day and I was like, if I didn't have this one on the scene, I would have had my last day on Game of Thrones and not known. Hmm. So yeah, but the, yeah, the entire scene was just amazing and you know, if I could do it, all, uh, if I could do it again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It's so good to watch as well, wasn't it? I was in tears, absolutely. It was amazing. Thanks. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> So I was wondering, based off all your guys' experiences with the different actors, which actors you thought were most like the character that they played? Um, Jack Gleason, who played Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I feel really bad already. I could not be further from the truth. I'd say Liam. Liam is probably, Liam's definitely the most like his character that I've worked with. Obviously. I, I didn't work with that many people, so um, out of the people that I did work with, he was definitely my psychic character. I guess Max wants to down. I mean, I only see him as the, the, the three eyed baby. Probably the, the most similar to like the base quality of the character would be Peter Jasperian, just because like he was really funny. He's got like that inherent wit about him. Probably on that aspect. A dry American wit on an all British cast. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. If you could have been a member of a different house besides the one that you were in on the show, uh, which one would you have chose? Or what are some qualities of the house that you have to Go for it. I was just going to say House Forrester. Woo! Woo! Gay yeah. fans, yeah. Can I be a wilding? Woo! Yeah, actually. Yeah. Sam, I was wondering, uh, do you play Fortnite? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Seems like a good game. Is it a good game? Yeah. No, yes, no. So, I was anybody else there, so I, I, I had another idea that we, we had talked about yesterday that I thought might be interesting. If you had to pick someone from the Game of Thrones to run for president, who and why? Character or actor? Character. Character. Right. Definitely character. Um, okay. For me, it would be Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion. Because, you know, he's not... He's got that nice balance of he's not, like, he's not a pushover, but he's not an asshole either. So, you know, he's got that good balance of, like, he can be like, I'm a leader, you're going to listen to me, but at the same time, I'm fair, and this is how things are going to be run. Um, and he thinks things through as well, which uh, no one else on Game of Thrones does. Um, yeah, I think or in politics, yeah. very often. 
think uh, Natalie Emmanuel, I don't forget her character's name. Um, Sam Sande. Yeah, first of all, representation. Whew. But also, like, she, I think she'd be fair, she'd be honest, she'd be kind. Um, she'd look after those without like, impoverished people. Um, I feel like she'd be Sorry, a proper social. Oh. Yeah, not Melisandre. <laughs> Melisandre's so kind and fair. She doesn't burn. Oh, yeah, she's right there. Yeah. She's already the Prime Minister of the UK anyway, so. She's burned and leached half the people here, so. <laughs> so, I actually have another question um, that we talked about. Um, obviously, all of your characters are dead. Sorry. But uh, if they weren't dead, how do you think that they would factor into the end game of Game of Thrones? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, as I said earlier, um, Book My Salad is really cool. Um, I, I, I haven't read the books, but I think um, <laughs> I'm going to read them. I, so my, I, I cover your ears if you help me read this far. It's book four. Um, so, she, like, in Dornish, like, law, an older sister will take the throne before a younger brother. Um, so she's been in Dorne for a while, like, chilling out, and they're like, and Joffrey dies, and, she's, and they're like, let's put you in the throne, and she's like, cool. So they, <laughs> so they start getting shit together, and then there's a battle, and Montana gets cut and loses an ear. And I think that that would be really, really interesting to see played out because, as we see frequently, uh, one of a woman's biggest tools in Westeros is her sexuality. And so by losing the ear, she's effectively losing her main part of, and now she's just a woman trying to put on the throne by right, by her, by her right, and the fact that she would, I think Marcella would be a bloody great queen. She'd be a lot better than Joffrey or Thomas. <laughs> and I think that she's such a cool. Sunday Marcella 2020? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that if, I would love to have seen that explored on screen. And I would love to, I think that she would be great. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to read the books and I look forward to seeing how that's further explored. Yeah. Has either of you read the books? Nope. Okay. I have the books. <laughs> Sitting on a shelf. They look very pretty. So, if, um, I was just saying no to having a read the books. <laughs> so if Hordor was still alive, how do you think she would? No. Well, I, I mean, I guess that's more of a question for Christian, because in my mind, I'm still alive in the past. <laughs> so, if anyone's recording, and Dan and Dave happen to be scrolling on YouTube and find this video, and or, you know, George or any of the HBO execs, and then, you know, there's all these spin-offs and talks about all this stuff. I mean, if you're a Winterfell and hold us around, give me a call. You know? How about those super secret season eight flashback scenes in Winterfell that you that, that... Oh, you know, the one where... Oh, yeah, where oh that one, yeah. They're transported to the future and <laughs> kill the Night King and, like, take the throne. Oh, shh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I feel like if, um... Shireen hadn't died, I feel like Stannis would probably be alive, which would mean they'd still be fighting for the throne. Um, which means that that could have been a possibility that Stannis, because he is technically the heir, the right blood to the throne. So um, I think there would have been a big thing with that, which would have been cool to see. Um, and then obviously there, he hasn't got any heirs, so it would have been like, once that had run out, like there would have been all, it would have been a completely different thing if he'd have been King, because he's got no heirs, and they'll be all who's next, who's next, who's next. And Dornish really does. <laughs> wow. In one of the spin-offs, Shireen goes to Dorn. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's called New Dawn. I don't know. I think we have one more. Hi. Uh, Sam, you mentioned that you wanted to join House Forrester. Is that because you have to play the video game on Telltale Studios? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, what did you think of the game's uh, direction and execution compared to what the show is like? You know what? I mean, I'm in a big music fan, and the, the like, sound effects and the music and the... Paula, were you involved in the Telltale game at all? The sound was shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, no, it, it, it was... You know, like, sometimes the backing track to games and stuff really, like, encapsulates you in this thing? So whilst the actual game itself was just, like, tapping on your iPad, 
and selecting options and stuff. It was a really good, I thought it was a really good game for the captain. And House Rush is a great house, they're not too violent. Uh, you know, they, they cut down trees, which, you know. They're on a Yeah, they're on a roll. And they're loyal to house stuff. <laughs> that leads in, hopefully, you know, that leads into another uh, question we were going to ask is, is what do you do in you know, your downtime? Any, any hobbies or interests or um, games you have played or haven't played or books that sit on your shelf that you look at? I'm masturbation. I'm um, basic arts, art forms. I master basic art forms like um, I play piano, um, I sing a bit. Um, you guys have such a dirty mind. Um, so do I. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> do you know what? I, I had raised my mic and I was about to say just feminist activism counted in the whole yeah. week. And now you've just broken yeah. through in that sentence. <laughs> And he likes it, and he do, you cannot tame him at all. He's just wild. But yes, yeah, so he's staying with my mum's at the moment because A, my housemate hates dogs, and B, my housemate would definitely hate my dog, who isn't just calm and sits on the sofa, who will rip the sofa apart and rip your face off as well. And you're, you're on uh, another show right now, right? You're filming something. Oh yes, I'm doing a, um, a children's Netflix show, so it's very different to Game of Thrones. Uh, and what have you got? And what have you got? Emmys. Woo! So we, we recently won two Emmys. Which was pretty fucking awesome. What were they for? What were the Emmys? Um, so one of them was for Best Directing with our first director, Paul Walker, who is incredible. And the second one was for Best Kids Show. Um, so that was a really cool experience. And um, yeah, so season two is coming out soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Well, we're out of time. So, so saying happy birthday before yeah? Oh, yeah, let's do it one more time. One more time. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. Thank you for coming, yeah, everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.